Um, this short lecture, um, it's only two slides, uh, touches on a subject that um, was is one of those more recent, um, I think, revelations in my journey um, that I took from a presentation at a conference recently. And, you know, I've been through, gosh, since the 90s anyway, I've been through a number of conferences, and especially as a... Um, in this role, I tend to go a few more conferences a year as I'm talking about the program and speaking and presenting and recruiting students and faculty. And so I've heard a number of speakers and there certainly have been nuggets that I've taken from several speakers over the years. Uh, but this particular conference, uh, there was a gentleman there speaking by the name of uh, Jake Poole. He's a former um, executive uh, for Disney. And I've seen him before, actually he spoke at my health system about six or seven years ago. I remember several changes that were made um, at our health system after he left. And actually it's ironic because at this conference, some six years later, whatever, he brought up a couple things that were specifically from my health system um, in his presentation. Um, you, and, and he also spoke at one of our national meetings. And uh, it's just very interesting. Uh, so I, have a, I, I remember him speaking before although the, his presentation at this conference was a bit different, but yet it was on the same subject matter, which was really relationships and interactions. And he got into a part of his conversation or his presentation where he talked about being human first and human last. And, you know, this, this was, uh, you know, sometimes, um, you know, over the years, as I have established and, and, and developed my leadership style, um, there are certain weaknesses that I've, I've kind of had to embrace because of the nature of the position of being a leader, uh, working in healthcare, uh, having a lot of folks that you uh, that you lead and folks that you work with, um, and just the dynamic environment of healthcare, all the personality and all the egos and everything else that comes with it. Um, and so when he said human first, human last, it caught my attention. Um, he went on to talk about it a little bit further. And, and really, it, I think it is one of the key uh, elements for, you know, someone who's cut from a cloth like myself. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the opening, you know, someone who, who looks to get the work done, I mean, who's about the work. Um, and I know I have practiced this intentionally, and I'm, I'm practicing even more intentionally. And for, and for those of you who this is a weakness that you may have, um, really, really, really take this simple but yet very, very deep um, tool, if you will, and start applying it so that you can become the professional that you really want to be. So human first and human last, it's, it's, it's again, it, it, it sort of, it's, it all says it right there, you know, building relationships one person at a time. And what it is, it's just in, in every interaction, and truly in nearly every interaction, when you, when you especially, um, and we'll talk about some details and examples in a moment here, but with those interactions, when you first communicate with folks, keep it as human as possible. Now that, that sounds strange because you're thinking, well, of course I'm human and keep it human and aren't we all human? But really it has to do with the, that the, the empathy um, and really the individual recognition of the person you're speaking with and not again, getting too caught up in where you are at the moment. And in that interaction, again, being human and really um, making sure you're making a contact and a connection. And that comes in different forms and, and in different in different shapes. But, you know, he, he, that's where he was focusing on that, that, that and if you practice this, you know, you bookend what you're doing with these things, with being human first and human last, that it essentially it will really, really essentially be, it will make things go so much smoother you know, and you'll build a rapport like never before. And of course, human last, same thing, you know, when you exit or when you leave, you know, finish being human. And really, what does that mean? I mean, it may mean different things to each of us a little bit, but to me, what it came down to was, it's think about the relationship first, think about the relationship last in your interactions. Um, and so I'm going to give some examples here on the next slide to talk a little bit more about this. But uh, but human first, human last, and again a, a very short session here. But again, I think a very powerful one. So 
for example, in emails, you know, again, it's real easy to send an email and not have um, a salutation or not mention a person's name or, you know, to just get straight to the point, you know, you know, say what you have to say and, and fire off that email. You know, I know a lot of us, we deal with tens of emails every day, maybe even hundreds of emails on a daily basis. And it can get very overwhelming when you're trying to squeeze emails in. And you see an email and you get something that you need to respond to and you just jump right to the, you know, to the solution or to the answer or to the response or the reply. And you, you know, um, you just, you just get it done and move it on. Hit send and go. And I can't begin to tell you how many times I've, I've written an email and I've stopped myself from sending it because I realized I jumped right to the work. I, I just answered it and I just try to get out and get it done. And I still have a habit of doing it from time to time. I just like, okay, answer, boom, go. But I really try to slow myself down. And um, and I know that I've sent countless emails to you as students. And um, for those of you who would be able to mail to me. And sometimes I think I do sometimes just respond, just directly get the work done, move on. But I do try, and I hope you've noticed at times when you email me, that I do try to open up a little bit in the beginning, um, particularly with the email that is, um, you know, where I'm speaking to somebody for the first time or if it's a more difficult subject, you know, I'll try to you know, say a name um, and try to make a connection on the front end and then get to the body of what the work is and then, you know, finish it with a, a closing you know, I think I often I start I start moving towards warmest regards at the end and with anticipation, and you know things like that just to soften the tone a little bit and try to be you know again more human. And so with emails, you know, there's ways of doing that. I mean, if it's with somebody that you uh, have just met, and if you're listening to uh, the conversation when you meet them, you know, you're asking questions about them, you can pick up little, you know details about their lives. You know, I know that um, I try hard to ask folks about, you know, what do they do outside of work and, uh, you know, what are some of their hobbies and do they have family and, and things like that. And then, the, then when I email them, I can connect with them and say, oh, you know, really appreciate you sharing the story about your daughter or your your pet or, or whatever it is. And, um, and so you can do that in emails. Um, meetings the same way, you know, meetings, it's easy to just jump into the work. Uh, this is an area I continue to really work on, but it's nice to set up sort of a, a way of sort of getting people relaxed when they come into the meeting. Um, and sometimes it, it really is just, you know, a small talk, you know, let, give enough time for there to be small talk or even maybe lead a little small talk, um, telling stories, you know, kidding and joking around appropriately. You know, things like that can really help set the tone of a meeting and sort of keep things sort of, you know, keep, keep, uh, you know, things kind of, kind of low key. You know, I know that um, truly be self-deprecating seems to help an awful lot. You know, really, you know, don't be afraid to uh, make fun of yourself or be made fun of. I know that's probably something that I often do uh, or often happen with me. People like to make fun of me. They like to tease me about my certain, you know, idiosyncrasies or behaviors or patterns and, and, you know, I probably when I was younger, I would probably have gotten maybe a little upset or uptight about that. But anymore, I just really don't at all. I just I just roll with it. In fact, I enjoy it, to be candid with you. Um, it's just a fun, you know, playing around. And so that's one way of, uh, you know, um, of, of, of really keeping things soft and light and as easy as possible. You know, I think you've noticed here in discussion boards, uh, there's a couple things that, that very strategically do to keep it human. You know, this online medium is so, can be cold and indifferent, and it can be just very black and white if it's not assembled the right way. And I know that you all know in every semester with every opening discussion board, there's always some element of sharing about your personal life that, that goes on. And that's, that was very intentional from the very beginning. You know, I really wanted through these 11 courses and to have an opening discussion board where we introduce ourselves and we get to know a little bit more about ourselves as we progress through. And I don't know if you noticed it as well, but the questions as we moved on got a little more personal um, as time moved on. I mean, I know that in some of the later discussion boards, we talk about people we most admire. We talk about some of our personal weaknesses with the SWOT evaluation, I think, in 260. You know, so we, we got a little more personal um, and shared a little more. And you and you were, it's amazing to see you all open up to each other. I, th I found that to be just uh, very rewarding. And also, that was also part of that human contact, making a human connection. 
Um, I think the way discussion boards are modeled where you respond to messages and then we start adding more of responding to the responses. Again, closing with the human connection. And when I read your posts, I see that. I see that human connection. I see that appreciation and that affirmation and the connection. Again, there's an example of human first, human last. I mentioned first contact here because what I have found very candidly over the years and very, and very specific to the way I am, because I like to get to the work so much, sometimes I'm so much about the work that when I meet someone the first time, I just jump right into the work. Let's just jump right into whatever it is about getting it done. And if you do not, or if I do not have a relationship with that person, it can very easily, and has happened, people will, will basically look at me as if I'm trying to push or be pushy about getting something done versus seeing that, no, I'm just about, I'm just kind of a, a goal setter and I'm just sort of, you know, about the work. And I've learned, and, I, and unfortunately, sometimes I'll push too far into the work and I also, they'll, I'll get that reaction where they start shutting down a little bit because they want to, quote, have this relationship or this empathy or or they want to be, have a connection or, or know that I'm not trying to pull something on them, that I have to back off and I have to stop the work. And I have to go back and be human first, you know, find out, you know, apologize sometimes, say, I'm sorry for being so uh, direct or, um, or whatever, and uh, maybe we can start over again or and just back off. Uh, and I found that works very well. People tend to be, for the most part, they're pretty gracious. If you say you're sorry and you back off and you start over again, um, but it's something you have to do fairly quickly. And it's a quick way to recover, you know, a bad start, if you will. Um, you know, direct reports. This is one of those things where, um, you know, I, I have uh, the term that you will hear at a management level is the term you need to manage up. Um, and we're managing up. And this is one of those challenges. This has always been a challenge for me because I've always seen people around me as equals. And I was, I was raised that way, um, you know, pretty much my, my, my early part of my life was that way and was very competitive as well. And so I never really saw direct reports as someone that you had to um, essentially, um, you know, you had to be, be, be strongly um, affirming for in your interactions. Um, you know, it was kind of more of a business relationship, but, but truly direct reports really need um, you to quote what they say manage up you need to build that relationship build that rapport um, again the human first human last get to know about the families get to know about their kids get to understand about you know um, you know the personal things going on in their life you know this is probably one of the things that came has I've worked on the most as my career has developed because really truly I think I was pretty fortunate in the beginning to have a administrator that we connected really well from almost day one in the beginning in fact my very earliest managers I mean right up for the first 15 years of my career I had great relationships with my administrators we, we it was just a very good back and forth conversation and relationship and it worked really well but it seemed in the last 10 years um, it changed quite a bit I think it had to do with consolidation and a lot more pressure going on the organizations and not knowing the people uh, you had a very distant administrative relationship. It wasn't a close administrative relationship. I mentioned before, I had what was called matrix reporting, where I had seven or eight direct reports or indirect reports, and they were all my bosses, which is very difficult. And you didn't really get a chance to build a relationship with them. You know, um, over time, they didn't hire you. you. You just ended up reporting to these folks at the corporate office, and it was by email or phone. Um, and so in some cases it was physical and candidly, the people that I spent more time with physically, their relationships were better, but the ones that I spent time with just over phone or very, very infrequently, they were the more stressed relationships. And it had to do with just that, that not being able to establish that same level of connection when you're working like that. And it really raised in my mind, wow, I mean, uh, I had never had to deal with that type of of um, you know relationship building before and it was very challenging for me and I had to make a lot of adjustments along the way so I found that very difficult and, and I continue to work on that um, and then personnel and this is another challenging one you know it is as a um, it's easy sometimes to, again get caught up in the work especially when there's just so much to be done and so little time to not be able to develop those human relationships you know in those in those contacts 
you know, those first and last contacts. But again, it's, it's, it's so important to, if you will, work on this. For some of you, it's, it's pretty evident, again, I've mentioned before, that you're pretty strong at this in the relationship building side, and maybe to, to a degree, maybe that's even a weakness. But on others, and I think this tends to go very often with folks who tend to be technically minded or work minded, you know, or even like I say, engineering minded, that the relationship is second. And this may be the area that you find that you most struggle with um, in your career. And as mentioned by the inspirational speaker, or as we mentioned in maybe some of the videos I've provided for you, you know, you know, embracing your weakness is really something that a professional needs to do, you know, day in and day out. And we really need to, again, fail forward, really learn how to take and learn from really with good intentional effort when sometimes we just don't succeed. And know that, uh, you know, you can always try to recover through uh, an apology or through just going back and say, hey, look, I, you know, I apologize for my part in something. You know, can we try again? And again, what I have found is pretty consistently, folks are pretty good about, yeah, sure, you know, no problem. And uh, you can move that relationship forward. So human first, human last. I hope this really gives you kind of another tool to put into your tool belt and your toolbox and that you will use it frequently, especially for those of you like me, who this may be an area where, you know, you really have to practice. You have to really practice this to, to be that professional that we're all trying to be. And that's it for Human First, Human Last.